In this lesson, I describe at a high level best practice methods to protect data at rest, in use, and in motion. Data at rest is data stored in databases or in files waiting for use or deletion. Data in use temporarily resides on endpoint devices while it is processed. Data in motion is moving across internet or on-premise network connections. One of the best ways to protect data at rest and in motion is via encryption. The two general types of encryption are symmetric and asymmetric. We take a high-level look into how these work in the next slides. Data at rest is usually encrypted by a symmetric encryption. It is fast, which is needed when quick encryption and decryption is needed during business operation. It's also used in security internet connections like TLS and HTTPS after the key exchange takes place. This graphic shows how this works at a high level. A single shared key is used to both encrypt and decrypt information. Asymmetric encryption methodologies use key pairs. Each entity using asymmetric encryption is issued a public-private key pair. The most common way of doing this across an enterprise is with a public key infrastructure, or PKI. The sender of a file uses the public key of the recipient. Public keys are widely known, or they're kept in a public key directory. The recipient then uses its private key to decrypt the information. No one other than the recipient of a key pair should know the private key. In addition to asymmetric encryption, data in transit is protected by multiple protocols. The protocols used include HTTPS, used for secure browser connections, Secure File Transfer Protocol, FTPS and SFTP, used to transfer files to and from servers or workstations, Secure Copy Protocol, or SCP, based on SSH and used to securely copy files, Secure Shell 2, or SSH2, used to securely access servers or other workstations, Remote Desktop Protocol, or RDP, used to remotely access workstations, and WPA3, used to secure wireless connections. Symmetric or asymmetric encryption is used across all of these protocols. Data in motion is commonly protected in two different ways, with link encryption and end-to-end -end encryption. Link encryption begins at the source and creates a secure tunnel at the data link layer to the destination. The source encrypts the data and sends it. Each routing point, switch, router, or other network node, in the message path, decrypts the message and re-encrypts it. This approach provides less human error because of all the encryption handled by devices in the message path. However, eavesdropping is possible at each node where decryption occurs. End-to-end -end encryption is enabled by public-private key pairs. One downside is that this approach sometimes relies on user intervention. In others, certificates may be used to enable the encryption. Data is encrypted from the time it leaves the sender to the time that the receiver receives it. None of the nodes on the network path or on the, the path that the data takes between sender and receiver can see the encrypted data. Protecting data in use means we have to prevent data theft while being processed on end-user or other endpoint devices. The data in use is stored in RAM and CPU storage. If a threat actor compromises a system, she has access to much or all of the data processed. This means that system hardening, access controls, monitoring, and effective incident response are all needed to prevent, detect, and mitigate system compromise. A PKI, or Public Key Infrastructure, is an asymmetric key management framework. It's a hierarchical trust solution that consists of four components, a certificate authority, a registration authority, 
subordinate CAs, and a mechanism to provide a central directory distribution management capability. This includes managing revocation lists. It uses programs, data formats, procedures, security policies, and public key cryptographic mechanisms. A certificate contains information about the entity to whom or which the cert is issued. In addition, the certificate is tamper-proof and it can be traced back to the issuer or the certificate authority. Traceback is needed for verification of the certificate when presented for holder authentication. The certificate contains a public key, a person's or organization's identity, and is signed by either a CA server or it is self-signed. It binds an identity to a public key. Self-signed certificates are not considered very safe because no third party verified the certificate signer's identity. There are different kinds of keys issued by the CA, including those that enable code signing, email encryption, digital signing, and secure internet connectivity. The certificate issuance process is simple, but takes some time if properly done. A CA root server is created to establish a PKI solution. The root server creates a key pair, and the private key is the root of trust across all issued certificates. The root server can be created by an organization to create an organizational level PKI, or an organization can subscribe to a CI or a CA service. Root servers should not interact directly with requesters. This isolation is needed to protect the CA's private key. As I show later, if the CA's private key is compromised, all issued certificates are essentially invalid. Consequently, CAs rely on subordinate CAs to process certificate requests and sign issued certificates. This enables the CA to either remove the CA root server from the network or shut it down completely. There can be more than one subordinate server, and each is issued a signing certificate by the CA server. The subordinate CAs use their certificates to sign certificates issued to other subordinate servers or to certificate requesters. If an organization subscribes to a CA service, a service-owned subordinate server might be placed on-premise. Registration authorities verify identity proofs provided by certificate requesters. They approve the issuance of certificates and have the certificates created by subordinate CAs. A person or organization sends a certificate request to a registration authority. The request content depends on how the CA verifies the requester's identity. Identity verification is critical for ensuring the certificate is issued to someone or something claiming a specific identity. Once the registration authority verifies the requester's identity, it issues the requester's certificate that contains the requester's public key. The requester was also issued a private key. If the key pair is generated on the requester's system, it is secured immediately after. If the private key is generated at the CA site, the private key must be securely sent to the requester. Certificates enable entities to trust each other, regardless of location or whether human or technology. Adam has a certificate issued by the Certificate Authority A in our example. Hannah also trusts CAA. Because of the trust, Hannah will trust Adam when he presents his certificate and she validates it. Now let's look at how certificate authentication works. Each browser is installed with a list of trusted certificate authorities. This speeds up the certificate verification process. CAs can be added to or deleted from this list. Adam, our user, wants to establish a secure HTTPS connection with a web server. A secure session begins by the server authenticating itself. In many cases, remote users are also required to authenticate to the server when multi-factor authentication is needed. The server sends a copy of its certificate, which holds its public key. Adam's browser checks the validity of the certificate. If the browser trusts the server CA, 
and the server certification is not expired or on the certificate revocation list, Adam's computer extracts the server's public key and it uses it to encrypt a one-time session key that it returns to the server. The server decrypts the session key using its private key and establishes an encrypted session. I cover more uses for certificates and asymmetric encryption in a Domain 3 video. In situations where the server is unable to decrypt the key that Adam sent to it, then it doesn't have the private key. If it doesn't have the private key, it is likely not who it says it is. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.